For many years now, Russ and Craig have had many wide-ranging conversations with folks from all over the gaming world. This is one of those conversations. D6G, the last chapter. So I'm like looking at uh, Reese's Christmas list, and it's yeah. got full, it's full of like video game stuff that I've not like I'm in. An oh, I bet it's all thing. the new. I bet it's all those little miniature ga- things, right? It, like well, you gotta have your Disney is, Infinity oh, wait, and wait, your. Wait, wait, wait a second! Yeah. I think I see someone across the Dunkin' Donuts that wait. you described to me two years ago from extra. Uh, it's extra Ryan. Life. That's an, Ryan it's from Ryan <laughs> Lesser. Ryan, uh, famed the designer monster. of High Heavens, the board game that just. Was successfully kickstarted and is now spreading its godlike tendrils around the world. Ryan, <laughs> Ryan join us. Come, have a seat. What are you eating over there? Now I know, uh, being you know, you work at Harmonix, right? I do. You do. Uh-oh. So what's and- Harmonix for those of you who? You know, the, for anybody who might be eavesdropping on our conversation and not know. So, so well, this is awesome. I get to talk to I get to talk to a Harmonix developer about video games. This is great. So, so Ryan, why don't you give everybody the high level overview about Harmonix? Uh, okay. Um, Harmonix is a video game developer in Boston. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've been, uh, mostly making, um, video games about music and have been doing it for a long, long time. Um, Harmonix, I like, get like rock band, some little games you might've heard of little, like, little games you may or may not, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. We, so we, you know, we started off making electronic music games like, um, uh, frequency and amplitude. And then we did uh, guitar hero and mm-hmm. guitar hero two. Wow. Um, and then we wanted to expand into full band games. So yeah, we did the rock band stuff. We made dancing games like yep. dance central. Dance central. I love that one. Um, cool. And, uh, and you know, we've been, you know, kind of at it ever since. And, you know, we're starting to experiment with, virtual reality and things like that. Um, but it uh, sounds like you have a very boring job. I think it's an awesome <laughs> job. So now Ryan, you being now, I assume music, virtual reality, right. video games. I mean, how awesome is that? Cause pretty much it's one of the few video game companies where like everybody also probably is super into music. So that's kind of awesome. So how cool is that? Now let me ask you this, Ryan. So you are in the Boston office, I assume of harmonics. Yep. That's uh, so we used to be in Cambridge. Yep. Um, and, um, up until, you know, I was in, I was in that, uh, in that area for about 15 years and then we just moved to Boston and it, uh, it's our only office. You know, we are, we're in Massachusetts and that's the only place we exist. That's awesome. So, so, and I bring this up only because this is the Dunkin' Donuts point now. See, <laughs> so being a New Englander and yeah. from Boston, you clearly understand the value and importance of Dunkin' Donuts here as a cultural icon. Yeah, well, I mean, it's how you give directions. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> you take a left at the first Dunkin' Donuts, a right at the second Dunkin' Donuts, and then at the third Dunkin' Donuts, you hang a left, and you've gone three blocks, and you're at my house. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, yeah, it's exactly No, you right. have to – I mean, maybe this is a Rhode Island thing because I live in Providence, but yeah. uh, in Rhode Island, we, you know, we talk a lot about things that used to be there. Right? Uh, so make a right at where the, the Dunkin' Donuts used to be. <laughs> And then take a left at where the Dunkin' Donuts is and stuff like that. I get it. We, okay, that's we, cool. we just had to do a, a major reaccreditation for the high school, and part of it was a, a huge production video that they made about my, the town that the school is in and everything. And one of the points they made is that this tiny little town in New Hampshire has three Dunkin' Donuts. Right. <laughs> Very that's interesting. A- and it's interesting because one is on the border of the su- southern border. One is right in the middle and one is in the northern border. So if you're driving through to get to someplace else like right. Peterborough, you're going to hit all three Dunkin' Donuts. Well, that's why you know it's a small town. It only has three. That's, that's I mean, true. You know, that's Nashua, I think, Nashua, New Hampshire, I think, has, at least has ten. I mean, I'm no, not. It's ex- got that's, way more than that. It's that. not even an exaggeration. That's that's no. just that's probably a low ball estimate. Yeah, I think um, there. So I think that there might be three within a one block radius of yes. my new office. <laughs> yes. For those listening yes. in in Seattle, this is like coffee shops. So you know, you, just, you know, how many coffee shops are in the one block radius of Seattle? This is how Dunkin' Donuts works in New England. Right. Uh, so so anyway, so what are you enjoying here this evening at the donut shop? What what do you what do you, what's your favorite? Uh, I'm an I'm old fashioned. I like the cake donut plain. No, no frills. Oh, so, bold choice. So back in the day, I don't know if you're old enough to remember this, but they used to have a little handle on the cake donut at Dunkin' Donuts. That was the 
Do you That's this? right. I, I am old enough. See, <laughs> see, see, there's a quality New Englander right there. Quality. So as someone old enough to remember that, then you must also, are you ready for this, Greg? You must mm-hmm. also remember classic video games as well. See the segue? Oh, nice segue. And, and I thought it'd be fun since, since Ryan's here, uh, clearly a video game designer and someone who also knows video games. Um, and we haven't fun. talked about video games in a long time. And we haven't because Rafe has been on the show in a while. So, so. So well, Ryan, he has, but well, he has, but he, other he, things he, he other things he wants. He's got to other talk. topics. Something about X wing campaigns, whatever. Um, so, um, so Ryan, like, what? I thought it'd be kind of fun to talk about video games and trends and what you're seeing, both as an industry insider, but also as someone who plays video games. So, what are we? What are you starting to see? Because um, it feels like recently, there's, I say recently, maybe like six to ten years, there's been really sort of a shift in, I guess, where the money is in video games. Does that even make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, well, you know, it's it, it, since I started making them, um, which I guess is like the er, mid '90s. There's there's been so many trends, like and, and directions that everything's gone in, and um, and I do feel like they're kind of coming and going faster than ever. Um, you know, for example, when when I was making. Um, Guitar Hero, it was really the the era of giant game companies and giant games like AAA. The, you know the term AAA gaming um, and games is like lots of money, um, lots of advertising dollars, and to get in to that scene was so difficult. We were very fortunate um, as a new video game developer in the late nineties. Um, Sony, uh, had like really awesome people, uh, actually all those people are still there, uh, who, who saw us as a group of people who could maybe make cool things for them. And we were given so much freedom and flexibility, um, that we were able to make games and have them be released on a, a major platform uh, in a way that I, it's, it was so hard to get into mm-hmm. now. Um, in comparison to the kind of monolithic, you know, triple A game developer, uh, we live in a world where like, um, high school kids are releasing games on a public, uh, platform like the apps, the app store or Google, you know, the Google store, anything like that. It's so different in so many ways. It's, it's pretty striking, you know, um, the and and it, that that particular one that I described comes along with so many details, like how much do games cost, right. and how do you make your money? Is it because it's not even that simple anymore? You used to just sell your game, right, and and that was it. And now, because of the weird like ups and downs, we're in a, a world where kind of a whole generation of pe- young people are growing up thinking that games aren't supposed to cost anything. Right. They're free or a dollar, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, um, and there's like new relationships with advertising, mm-hmm. um, you know, 10 years ago, uh, you know, in the guitar hero, um, you know, a- era, um, people were pretty anti advertising as a, a generality, like things like TiVo were were out and there were buttons that you could use to skip advertising mm-hmm. and people were using blockers on their web browsers and stuff. And I've spoken to a lot of younger uh, players who it's just a part of what a game is because if you're going to play a game for free, well, you're going to be advertised to mm-hmm. um, and just their relationship to advertising and their, their private information and all this stuff is just so different than someone who's like, like 35 or 45. It's just, it's just really interesting. And it's all about these ebbs and flows in video game styles and video game sales styles and development styles and all that stuff. It's kind of funny. I, I, I thought it was interesting. You mentioned that, um, uh, you know, when, when harmonics was starting, it was hard for a small developer to get out there and it's sort of come full circle now where it's, it's, it's almost, it's not easier, but it's easy for, for for one shop developers to to do something, but you know that reminds me of back when when computers were very young in the late eighties early nineties when it was all small shop developers. You know there weren't you know EA was just starting right and there wasn't any real large large video game companies and there also wasn't necessarily perceived a lot of money and so it was all like one guy in the corner making his own game 
yeah. then through the '90s, they became AAA titles, and you needed voice acting, and you needed you know big budgets, and you needed scripts, and you needed artists, and, you, and you, you one guy couldn't do it anymore. And it looked like you'd only have studios, right? And then, mm-hmm. and and I don't know what the tipping point was. I kind of feel like it was mobile gaming, but yeah. uh, you know when. When all of a sudden it became cool to have eight bit graphics on your phone, even though which is ironic, because even though your phone can still rock the, I mean, do things that we couldn't do in like '96, you know, on <laughs> yeah. a phone. Uh, but but now it's like eight um, bits cool, and you know things like Minecraft just show up and explode. And yeah. you know, you know, one guy in his basement did that. Um, all of a sudden, it, it became possible to do this again, and um, and and now you've got things like you know I know PlayStation and Xbox both have these sort of indie programs that get games out there pretty straightforward. I know Harmonix has taken advantage of some of that, um, so it's really easy to do that stuff. I think that's it is sort of interesting how it's come full circle and casual gaming, quote unquote, is sort of uh, become the mainstream gaming if if that makes sense. Yeah, um, I mean I do agree. I think it, you know when mobile blew up, when smartphones became a, a thing, when iPads started. Uh, becoming the the sort of um platform of choice for families and stuff uh it really did change everything um and allowed for an entirely different type of marketplace so like the the upside of um the fallout of that whole uh era is anyone can make games and anyone can anyone has a platform to put their games out in the world, whether you're doing it in a web browser or on one of the big um, store platforms like steam or, or the I or the Apple store or anything like that. Um, but the downside, uh, you know, kind of the downside is that uh, in comparison with the old eras where a game would come out like, I mean, you can count the number of new games each month practically on your hand, your two hands. Right. Um, whereas now there's like tens oh. of thousands of games yeah, coming out all. Right. Uh, from all across the world, from all diff- from single developer, single person developers to big developers. So trying to get your game even noticed in the first mm. place is now the new problem. It's not finding five million, ten million, twenty million dollars to make a game. It's okay. I just devoted two years of my life um, uh, making this this game all by myself, and it's it's like a masterpiece. How the hell is anyone even going to see this thing? Right. You know, um, it's so difficult now. E- even even throwing money at it, there's just so many places to get games and so many uh, ways to acquire them that it just uh, it's daunting and difficult. It sounds like so. How is a company like Harmonix really? Because you've been there since. I mean, have you been how, how long have you been at Harmonix now? Uh, I started in '99, so pretty early on in there. I mean, what what, yeah. what were they doing at that time? Were they just into Guitar Hero then, or were they? Uh, no, no, that was that predates the Guitar Hero by a, a long way. Oh, so wow. um, Harmonix was around for a few years just as a software developer. They were yeah. trying to figure out what they wanted to make, and they were doing like applications for PCs that allowed people to kind of get the feeling of making music. It really is the the guts of what became the harmonics that everyone knows, but they weren't making games and they decided that they wanted to move into games as like a popular interactive Mm -hmm. platform that people were really excited about again. Um, And so they hired a small group of people to switch the company's sort of, um, focus to video games. And I was one of those people. Um, There was like three or four of us that came on with the sole intent of making video games. And so I was the art director um, and Josh Randall was hired and he was doing audio and Greg LaPiccolo uh, was doing the, the more of the game design side of things, product development. That's awesome. Um, And we decided that's when we started making frequency. Um, And that was our first video game. So I've been there since we, our very first video game. I was the first artist um, on the team and all the artists, uh, afterwards, you know, most of them were hired by me, <laughs> were hired by me. That's awesome. Well, I, first of all, I have to say, I just got to geek out for a second and I'll do this more on the show, but I'm a huge fan of harmonics. I, I remember, so I, I liked, um, I just thought the games, the idea behind, and, and here's the thing, like I have no musical talent whatsoever. None. <laughs> I am, I can't carry a tune in a bucket. I've, 
I tried to learn guitar once when I was very young. It was a complete failure. Um, but I love, but I like music, obviously, like most people do. And so I, the whole idea of being able to get that close to my music, um, that way. And, and I know it's pretend and people would say like, why do you stand there playing a plastic pretend guitar? It's, it's the same reason I hold a controller and shoot a pretend gun at people. It's I'm pretending <laughs> I'm doing something I can't do for real, but it yeah. feels like I'm doing it right. It's, it's the, it's, it's the, it's the, but you also, you also appreciate the music in a, in a different way. Right. Which is really cool. Like you actually, you start to learn, you start to appreciate the people in a band that you don't even think about when you normally listen to music, right? You're always Normally, yeah. unless you're a guitarist or unless you're a drummer, you're almost always thinking about the lyrics maybe and the lead singer or how the music makes you feel. But yeah. all of a sudden when you're playing the guitar in rock band or you're playing the drums, you're all of a sudden going, holy crap, this guy, whenever like a certain band comes on, you'd be like, holy crap, this is the one with that really good drummer. I can never, I can never do his thing, you know? Um, yeah. So I just thought that was amazing. But what was really cool about what you guys did was you kind of became, well, you did, you did become sort of that, that that craze, right? I mean, in the mid two thousands there, I mean, rock, but everybody, even non gamers, like everybody just had, they were buying consoles just to be able to do rock band and, and guitar hero, right? That, that was like such a big deal. Yeah. Um, h- how was harmonics and, and you were the triple eight at that point, you guys were one of those triple A people, right? I mean, you were one of those companies, right? Yeah. I mean, we were, we had a weird, a bit of a weird position in that whole world because we were still a small little company mm-hmm. Um, small little team making those games. Um, but we were trying to be AAA, like we wanted to be AAA, and so we did our best to match everything we could. But during, like, during Guitar Hero era, and uh, uh, we, you know, we had—I don't even remember how big the team was, but it was tiny. It was like um, the core team was like twelve people or something, wow. and then we grew as we needed testing and and stuff like that. But then um, we became acquired by uh, by um, Viacom, mm-hmm. um, which then now we were AAA, right? We right. had a big company behind us. We had marketing dollars. We had um, 150 people on uh, some of the rock bands. So like we did find our way through trying hard to act like we were AAA to being AAA, you know, whole hog. Yeah, I think, and I think it succeeded. Obviously, I think when you watch, you know, VH1, you know, when they do the, you know, the VH1 is little decade, decade things. When they do decade of two thousands, I mean, you can't go through there with all the things that happened then and not talk about things like Guitar Hero and Rock Band. I think it was that big a deal, which is really cool and something to be very proud of. How is Harmonix sort of? Since you've been there since pretty much the beginning of Harmonix, the game company, right? Yeah. How have you guys had to evolve given the change? the change to how people consume games. Right. I mean, it, like I, yeah. I look at like something like dance central, which I also, again, cannot dance, not a dancer. <laughs> you don't want to see me dance. You don't want to see me anywhere, but I love playing that game. I have lost more weight. I literally, I can take off 20 pounds. I've lost thanks to D- dance central. I, and I, but I dance in my basement. So no one can see me. My kids, <laughs> my kids tease me all the time about it, uh, but they like to dance with me, but they don't like to look at me while I do it. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a personal problem, but well, you can, you can shut the lights off. Cause right. the, the camera Ex- can see in the dark. Exactly. Right. It's all infrared. Um, but like, like even that game went through a change, right. Where it was, um, on the Xbox 360 in particular, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm an Xbox guy, but I know you have it on other platforms too, but, but I was, you came out as sort of a big deal and now it's more of a, um, sort of an Xbox live thing with just expansion. So you can get in really cheap now and then you just buy the songs you want. Is that sort of an example of how you guys have changed with, with where gaming now is supposed to be a lower cost of entry and you add what you need to it? Um, I mean, we, we've had a very interesting few years because we became indie again. Yeah. Um, years ago, uh, when, when Viacom basically left, um, the picture. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that, that moment in time was very interesting because it, it's also the same about the same time when like free to play became gigantic. So mm-hmm. here we are like indie again. And the, the way that it's affected our culture probably the most is that, um, instead of being on monolithic teams, um, you know, we used to just be two games at a time maximum. So like, We'll, we would do what we call the big game and a little game. So like Rock Band 2 would be the big game and Dance Central 1 would be the little game. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, now 
we have many teams working at harmonics. Like I think at any point there's five different things being made. Some are in early stages of like secrecy and some of them are mid stage, some of them are late stage, but we, we have to do things differently. We can't be the giant monolithic game um, developer anymore because uh, things have polarized so much, kind of like what we were t- touching on earlier, but the, the sort of, atmosphere right now is like triple a title uh, triple a developers are still around mm-hmm. um and there's much fewer of them but there's then there's tons of indie developers mm-hmm. um and this thing that's sort of been emerging i've heard this term come up a bunch the past like six months is triple i which is indie developers that are a sort of like harmonics like bigger indie developers with lots of game experience who are putting out like p- highly polished games, things that you might look for in, in, in triple a, but it's being made by like a 10 person team. Yeah. Um, uh, or, or, you know, any, any slice of the, of that recipe that makes you triple I. And that's sort of how we are now. Like we've got, it's really, it's pretty cool in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that by, by definition means that the games change. So we, we are, I mean, we just put out rock band four, which is, which is pretty big, but, but by definition, our games are going to be, um, smaller, like amplitude, the the game that I kick started for harmonics, uh, and, uh, and became the creative lead of, um, that game is like, uh, it's pretty it's pretty small compared to some of our other more expansive games. I mean, we we just still try to make it robust and like mm-hmm. r- a rich experience, but the team was very small. Um, the budget was small compared to something like a rock band or a Beatles. Right. Um, and you know, and Amplitude is actually one of the bigger games that we're making. Like yeah, we right. did City Sleeps, which was a like I don't I think that might have been a five person team uh, released on Steam. Um, you know, so, so anyway, that was my gigantically long (laughs) answer to your question. Um, but it's really changed a lot actually about how we do things. Well, it's, it is interesting. I think that you guys sort of went back to the indie model, right. And you're, and you're even leveraging platforms like Kickstarter and things. So you, even though, um, you know, harmonic, anybody who's into rhythm games, harmonics is a household word, but you guys are using the same tactics that a startup indie developer would be using to get your software out there now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we we used the last year as a sort of um, a little bit of a laboratory. Like we were experimenting as ma- in as many places as possible, like crowdfunding, Steam, free to play, cheap games. Uh, we've been doing a bunch of um, um, iOS games and and uh, mobile games. Like as a matter of fact, um, you know, on the day that we're recording this, we. Our, uh, we just released um, our game Beatniks, which is a, a music pet game. Um, so that's a brand new game that just came out today. We'll have to check that out. Is that a, is that a, mm-hmm. what platforms is that on? That That's mobile. Um, oh, cool. So, so cool. you know, talk about a scale shift. It's like, right. It's, it's really different than being on like the cutting edge um, latest generation console that comes with like peripherals and cameras and right. motion sensors and all that stuff. Cool. Beatniks. I'm going to check that out. I'm going to check my, my, my daughters. I think I like that game. It sounds cool. Anything with pets and music is a win. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I was going to, I was <laughs> going to say a, it's a no brainer yeah. formula. Really. Let's be like honest. Taylor, Taylor, Taylor design. <laughs> right. Right. So, well, let me ask you this. Cause I know in the main show, we're going to get all into your board game, which is great, but I want to, I want to kind of quiz you here on video game stuff. So, so Ryan, before we add on a timer, what, um, Obviously, as a game designer, um, you also look at other people's work for you know just as inspiration or keep what they're doing. What kind of video games do you enjoy playing, either for relaxation or to kind of to kind of see what everybody else is doing and kind of help you inform where where you think um, harmonics should go? Um, well, I I I'm still kind of sort of like a, a child of the arcade era. Mm-hmm. Um, it's sort of been my MO at harmonics. Uh, I'm one of the people that, that tends to pull our games into an arcadey feel. Um, so th- that's sort of where I, where I like to stay. Um, and what I mean by that is like games that are asking minutes from you instead of hours. And mm-hmm. if you want to play it for hours, you can, but 
it's like a different type of mold um, for the game. Uh, I like like all action and very little downtime. Like whatever the core mechanic is of the game, I want the game to be mostly that core mechanic. I don't want many, many layers built on top of it. And um, because of that, it's sort of like why I like um, – uh, why I like mobile uh, so much as a platform and the smaller indie plat like uh, sub platforms on like mm-hmm. the PlayStation four and, and, and Xbox and stuff like that. Um, because you can, you can get that experience in a way that's really fast and, and interesting. You know, it's, it's, you used the term casual earlier and that's pretty much um, the kind of game I like most, even though I do go deeper sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um that's that's the type of game that I'll that I'll sort of stick to. So, just as some examples, um, I've been playing a lot of Rocket League. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, they captured a lot of really good things in a really tight little uh, package. Um, and you can sit down, you can play it for a couple minutes, play a game, and then walk away, or you can sit down for an hour and play many rounds, kind of like the old school consoles used to be. You know, consoles don't really have that feeling anymore so when it when it pops up i sort of jump on it um i've been uh i've been on on mobile i've been playing like pac-man 256 Mm -hmm. um i don't know if you've seen that one but it's by the hipster whale guys who did uh uh, crossy road yep Uh, um and it's all based on the the glitch that was found in the original pac-man game yeah um so i've been having a lot of a lot of fun with that um and you know uh let's see what else has sort of been doing it for me recently um i you know i i I heard you guys talking about the battlefront star wars yep um i jumped into that even though that's not my typical uh type of game Mm -hmm. but the the allure of of being like star wars you know yeah of star wars <laughs> right. and like you know fighting uh walkers and mm-hmm. seeing luke running across hoth with his saber out like i just had to try it and i, I had a lot of fun theme completely did it for me mm-hmm. um you know i don't know how how much i'll get into the long form version of it but i'm certainly gonna gonna check it out just because the theme is so strong i like those bite-sized chunks for games like that you know a lot of those multiplayer i mean you can just jump into that do a quick you know, big Hoth battle for like 15 minutes or so, and then just move on to something else or take a break. You know, you don't have to, it's not like, uh, a store because there's no longer story. You're not either felt drawn to, to play more because there's a story you're missing or waiting for the next checkpoint, right? You just play the match. You're done. So it's yeah. fun. And I, 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 I'm with you. I, I like a lot of these games. Now, like I was, I talked on the show before about, um, games like, alto on ios which is a beautiful little snowboarding game yeah great graphic design there's only one control you tap the screen to jump yeah there's no and it's it's amazing how many different there's a lot of these games now where there's like one or two controls and they're actually a lot of fun and they're not all the same feeling which is really amazing it's like back in the old arcade days when you had just a joystick and one button and yet there was donkey kong next to galaga totally different experiences but same controls right so it's like yeah it's really interesting to do that and see what people, how creative people can get with these very, very simple controls. So I, I do find that fascinating too, and I like that. But I also still like my meaty. Uh, like I, I do really enjoy. There's some AAA titles where they can really get the storytelling to the level of a movie. I, I do get sucked in, like the two, the re- the re-release of Tomb Raider and the new Tomb Raider coming out. I think later this month. That the way they executed on that was really amazing to me. And yes, it's a more complicated game. It's definitely AAA, but some of those things I still get into those kind of games. So they're still yeah, I, yeah. I, Tomb Raider um, pulled me in because I um, when the original Tomb Raider came out, I was I was more uh, invested in longer form games, and right. Tomb Raider is just such an iconic uh, game for me. Um, I bought it and I played it a bunch, and I you know. I loved the parts that felt like Tomb Raider and I kind of didn't like the things that were pulling me out of the game. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you know, like the UI stuff that you had to read and adjust and, you know, check your inventory and all those things. Right. Those, I never really dig that stuff. So eventually I fell out of it, even though what I would probably enjoy doing and maybe will do is just watch a walkthrough of it because yes. it's, 
beautiful. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. And it, it's so, ex- it's actually really an exciting looking game. Um, and I like that character. I would like to just sort of like check it out maybe as a viewer instead of a player. Yeah, no, it's, it's really cool. And I think that's why too, you get games now. Like if you think about games like, um, gears of war and halo, right? Like there's no inventory management in those games. You carry two guns and you can flip back and forth and you never leave the view screen. And I think that's one of the reasons they, they do that. And there's really, they're very short bite-sized chunks between checkpoints. So you yeah. can really jump in, you know, blast through a ship and jump out and you, you're completely immersed. So if you like first and person shooters, and I know nobody does, but if you like that, they, they are pretty good at that sort of thing now. Um, which is, which is pretty interesting too. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, along the same lines, I'm a, I'm definitely a fan of fighting games. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it fits right into that category. You know, I want to put, I want to walk up, put my quarter in and get my three rounds. Um, so like street fighter and virtual fighter have been a big part of my video gaming life for like the past few years. I have a couple core games, both in board games and in video games that just stick around like, Mm -hmm. And don't go away for me. <laughs> um, I've been playing Virtual Fighter since the very first one, and it's still probably my favorite fighting game. Um, it's sort of like Magic the Gathering. Like I, I am always playing Magic the Gathering. Like through mm-hmm. all different versions of like what I'm playing elsewhere. Elsewhere, like yep. that game just sticks in the library for me of things that I want to do all the time. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, my, my fighter game is soul caliber. For some reason I've been addicted to soul caliber since the very first arcade cabinet. And so like, uh, is it the weapons? I think it's the weapons. So I think I like the fact that everybody's got a sword and, a, and some of them have shields and the fighting styles are involved weapons and things like that. So that's what, what got me. But yeah, I think everybody's, I think everybody who grew up in the arcade era has one fighter they really like, right? Whether yeah. it's Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter or, 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 or virtual fighter or whatever, but there's, everybody's got one of those they love. Yeah. I mean, I was a, I was a wrestler in high school. And yeah. so, um, the thing I loved about virtual fighter and they maintained this through all of the games is the timing of, mm-hmm. of that game is really unlike all the other games. And it feels like what really happens when you're doing um, like hand to hand battle, basically, (laughs) you know, it's not just like super twitchy and hyper fast. It's, Mm -hmm. it's a slow game and you really have to watch where the body of the opponent is going in order to Mm -hmm. figure out what you're going to do. Um, and that just really spoke to me as someone who did something like that, um, you know, sort of, uh, competitively. Um, there was a game that came out on the, in the place, was it PlayStation one or two, uh, called toe ball. Do you remember that one? I don't remember that one. It was by um, a Japanese designer, and it had very interesting 3D graphics and a totally in, like different interface. You used, uh, if I remember correctly, the analog sticks, and it was really grappling heavy. Like there was oh, a lot of grappling, yeah. and it had a similar timing to like Virtua Fighter and Soul Calibur, where it was a little slower mm-hmm. and not as twitchy as like Street Fighter or or Mortal Kombat might be. Cool. Very cool. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me here in Dunkin' Donuts about video games. And I think I'm here too. <laughs> I think Craig's falling asleep Talk in his chair. I am uh, not this crawler. Asleep. I'm taking notes for <laughs> Oh, Christmas. you are? Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, well, we should, you know, do you have any questions? I noticed, Craig, your wife. Yes. Well, uh, yeah, okay. Was, was, so, yeah, so you got I us have here. And I don't, I don't know, Ryan, if, uh, if you've been involved in any of this. Um, what are they? I can't remember the official term, but, but all these games now that have the little figures. So Skylanders sort of started it all, right? And then Skylanders yeah. came out and did this. And then, of course, Disney Infinity and then Nintendo got in on it now. So there's a bunch of these games where there's figures that you put on a base that you plug into your console. And by doing so, they, those figures then come into the game and you play with them and they, they have different powers and stuff. And, and right. Craig, yeah. did you have any questions about those for Christmas, for Reese or anything like well, that? I can well, this is you? what we're doing. First all right. of all, we didn't – I mean he's five. Right. And, I, and, and if I get an actual like Xbox One or whatever into my house, I'm never going to write another novel. So <laughs> that really wasn't an option. <laughs> right. Um, so we actually got – somebody offered us uh, an Xbox uh, – 360, an older uh, one. Yeah. 360, an old yeah. one, yeah. Um, and so I guess, I think the answer was, I, I think Joel Carl- Carlson actually answered finally yes. late last night, uh, to Karen's satisfaction. But the question was, and I, and I would like a little more information <laughs> so you can get like Marvel superhero guys and you can get yeah, star right. Wars for, for, for Disney infinity and you can get Disney characters and right. God knows what else. Right. 
Now, is the game itself always the same game? Like the goals are the same and the and the graphics are the same and all you're doing is putting these new characters in? Or if you like put Mickey Mouse in, does it like come with any like I, I guess like a side quest kind of thing that would be Mickey oriented or, or is it literally the game is the game you're playing baseball and it's a question of whether uh, the guys running around the bases are Marvel superheroes or Star Wars characters or whatever. Okay. Well, I will. So my daughters, so my daughters originally like Skylanders and then they moved yep. on to Disney infinity and that Disney infinity is the only game they care about. Right. Uh, not the only game. I'm sorry. The only game with the miniatures they care about. They actually are total Minecraft nuts actually is what their thing is. <laughs> well, that's, um, I mean, that's other, his other big but, thing. But, is but anyway, but so, so Disney infinity. So it's kind of yeah. both. So how it works is that there are these, objects you can buy these there's there's actually three slots on the base right uh-huh. you can have two and because two people can play at a time there's could be two different let's call them heroes okay characters and there's one other slot that's for an, an object so okay and these objects take you to different worlds with different stories so in disney infinity 2 for example there was a guardians of the galaxy set that came with this little guardians of the galaxy spaceship clear mm-hmm. place if you put that on the base that loaded up the that was like putting in the disc that launched uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy story. And right. So you'd be immersed in the Guardians of the Galaxy world, and while in that world, you could only put Guardians of the Galaxy figures on the base, but then you could play those heroes. So you could play yeah. Groot and Rocket, or you could take Rocket off and put on Star-Lord, and now I'm playing Star-Lord and my daughter's playing Groot, and right. then she could take Groot off and put Rocket on, and now she's playing Rocket, right? But you couldn't be like Mickey and Goofy. Uh, well... So not as long as you are in that world. But then right. there's a mode called the toy box mode. And by the okay. way, each hero has their own abilities and they're different. Right? Yes. So, okay. so Rocket can jump higher than Groot. Rocket's got big guns. Groot's just super strong and can shoot out his branches. And so they all behave and act like you'd expect that figure to behave and act in their world. Right. Yeah. So while you're in the story mode, that's sort of fluffy and telling the story of that universe. You can only be characters of that universe, right? Okay. But then you can go into what's called toy box mode. And toy box mode is kind of like Minecraft. You can build a world. So you can go Uh in there, you can put a castle in the corner, you can add a wall, you can put a racetrack down. And when you're in toy box mode, you can put any character in. So you can have Goofy running along next to Groot. Okay. And Goofy does his own thing and Groot does his own thing and you can play together and you can all of a sudden put Groot in a race car and race him on the track against Goofy or Goofy can be in a helmet. So you can do whatever you can dream up, Uh you can do. So if he likes Minecraft, he'll like that element. So it's kind of got... It's a hybrid game where you have those story elements where you got to use things that make sense. Right. Uh, and then what they did was when they introduced the Marvel stuff, so when they came out with the, with the Marvel for Disney Infinity 2, uh-huh. you, could, you could go to either the Avengers world or you could go to Ultimate Spider-Man's world. Uh-huh. And while you're in Ultimate Spider-Man's world, you could only use Ultimate Spider-Man characters. However, there were little secret unlocks. And when you got enough of those... You could then put on other Marvel heroes and have them come in. So Iron Man kind of a cameo if you'd unlocked Iron Man and then had the figure. Ah. So they did some interesting stuff there. And now it gets even crazier because now they've taken that idea. And in Disney Infinity 3, by the way, Disney Infinity 3 lets you use all the figures from Disney Infinity 1 and 2. Okay. uh, Plus Disney Infinity 3 figures. But you can only use the stories from the the third version, if that makes sense. Uh So. So in Disney Infinity 3 now, they've added all the Star Wars stuff. And much like Marvel, where there was, you could play in Ultimate Spider-Man's universe or the Avengers universe, in Star Wars, you can play in A New Hope, or you can play in Force Awakens, or you can play in, you know, the prequels. And you can choose, ah. there's different backgrounds for this. And then, of course, in those, if you're playing in, in A New Hope, you've got Han Solo, you've got Chewbacca, you've got Original Leia, you know, and they've also okay. got different versions of the figures too. So you can get Mickey Mouse, for example, in the Sorcerer's Apprentice outfit. You can also get Mickey Mouse in his regular outfit. Right. Similarly, you can have, you know, uh, young Luke. I'm sure you're going to have a Force Awakens Luke, right? And that kind right. of stuff as well. Um, so they've got all those different things going on. They've also got Rebels, Star Wars Rebels in there now. Uh, um, oh, cool. So now, here's a question. Yes. It's also so very expensive because each yeah, of these I was figures are. Say, well, but, they're beautiful. They're beautifully but, uh, crafted figures. I think the, the Disney Infinity figures are probably some of the best. They're almost like FFG models. Like they're they're the kind of thing you put on your desk. They're really cool, but uh-huh. unfortunately, that makes the price point to be like fifteen bucks each. So right, you know. Um, can you so do those? Was... Can you get those used? Like uh, the Skylander ones, I think had like data yes. burned into them or something, right? Uh, yeah. There's no. So how it works is that's the other thing, Craig. So each figure levels up. Yeah. So when you put the figure on your base, it levels up and saves it back to the base. So mm-hmm. if I were to take my Luke Skywalker to your house. And it's he's level 10. My Luke, my Luke Skywalker goes in there at level 10. 
and I can show you all the cool new moves. I've t- and they also, it's like a little mini RPG because as you level up, you can pick which abilities to get better. So my Luke might be able to throw his lightsaber farther than your Luke, and your Luke uh-huh. may be able to run faster than my Luke. Um, but you can wipe them. So you can uh-huh. wipe them and then take ownership. So you could, yes, Ryan, you could buy it, use, and, and I think GameStop and a couple other companies resell them. Okay. Uh, so you might be able to save a little bit of money going that route. But I, 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 I may have just discovered a huge flaw in our plan. Like, yes. So we're getting the old Xbox 360. Can yeah. that play Disney Infinity 3? So I believe Disney Infinity 3 has a 360 version and an Xbox One and, a, okay. and PlayStation 3 and 4. So they haven't gone all the way to only the newest con. I I'd have to look that up, but I'm pretty sure that's uh. correct. But you do need to get the newer game. Uh, it right. doesn't hurt to have the old game, though, too, because as I mentioned, the old... The old game doesn't um, will will be needed to play the older stories. But right. what's cool is the old figures. So if you have like, um, let's say you have the, the cars or Toy Story characters from Disney yeah. Infinity Two, you can put them in the toy box in Disney Infinity Three, and now you've got Buzz Lightyear in Disney Infinity Three. Even though there's right. not a there's not a Disney Infinity Three Buzz Lightyear, you could have them that way. I'm pretty sure that Infinity Three is uh, is 360 compatible. Yeah, I think it okay. is because I think. Yeah, I think you're right. I should go Google that right now. The, that whole thing is like I can't even say how genius it was for them from a business standpoint. Yes. To they were like, okay, so people are are not buying physical video games anymore, right? How right. Can, right. how can I make how can I make more money? You know, and they're just like, Let, well, let's make the game and let's make physical items that people just want to keep buying more and more and more of, you know, yeah, it's, it's right. genius. It's genius. It's genius. <laughs> and, and the well, IP of it is brilliant because it's, cause Disney yeah. has the best IPs now between yeah. well, that, heroes Disney, and star yeah. Wars. And they're yeah, like it's a no giant 8,000 yeah. pound gorilla. Yeah. I think it's interesting because it's now the intersection of video games and toys. Cause Karen's yes. initial thought and hopefully Reese won't get a hold of this, you know, lost chapter. Um, <laughs> and, and spoiler alert, but right. anyway, um, was like there's this set of castle toys that he really, really wants, and she wants to get him the castle and all those toys. And since the 360 is going to be free, we're going to get him like Disney Infinity. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, I was last night, I was like, Disney Infinity, Karen, you need to like buy the models. What? Yeah. We had a what we had to buy what and so all of a sudden it's like oh now what are you gonna do like yeah. it was like oh it's gonna be three video games and i know what i'm gonna do and then it's gonna be all this castle stuff and now it's like oh but well you don't have to get all the figures like they well the cool, about the, the cool thing about the figures is you could you can say we're gonna you could tell the grandparents and everything we're gonna get them the base set oh that's yeah oh, one or two figures that's and if everybody gets like a 15 dollar figure that's not a too expensive thing and now he's got 10 guys or so you know right so yeah, and then that, he can well, get that, more for that, his birthday that, and if he likes it, yeah <laughs> But don't yeah, it's over. Not called, it's not called infinity for nothing. That's right, exactly. But don't yeah. over invest because he may hate it. So don't buy like thirty. No, 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 we, don't. we wouldn't do that. But, um, um, yeah. but it was just an interesting thing because she had it all plotted out. Yeah. And then when she mentioned Disney Infinity last night, I was like, Oh, Karen, let's talk a little so bit about what, this. What makes the game even eviler? And uh-uh. uh, Skylander yes, started. By this. all means, tell so, me. So here's what makes it even eviler. So you're on that really important. So Ryan, you're like this, right? So you're doing one of the stories, right? And you're fighting a major boss, and you're kicking butt. And but you you got health bars and everything. So one of your guys dies. So in that scene, if both your characters die, then you got to go back and reset to the checkpoint. So if I'm playing, if 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 my daughter's playing Chewbacca and I've got Han Solo, right? We're fighting this bad dude, and my Han Solo goes down. Well, in a normal video game, I'm stuck until Chewbacca either wins it or he dies, and we got to reset. But if I've also got a Luke Skywalker figure ready, I can take. Han Solo in the middle of the battle off the thing, throw Luke on there. Now Luke's in the battle. Now if I put Han back on there, the game remembers Han's out of hit points. So putting Han back on there won't, <laughs> won't jump back in. So now i got to go to Luke. Now we're fighting the boss. Now Luke dies. But don't worry, I've also got Leia. So now I can throw Leia in there. Yeah. And if I've run out of figures and I lose, well, I better go buy another figure. So next time I find I can have four guys. You see, it's brilliant <laughs> on so many levels. <laughs> so it's like, and then your kids go through, they're like, we got to max all the levels. And then what happens is you get this Hall of Heroes that shows all your figures that you own and which ones you've unlocked. And it's it's totally like Pokemon. You know, it's, it's, it Ugh. gets all those things brought together that right. that oh, we all get addicted to yeah. into this thing. It's it's really a very brilliant um model and and evil and the thing that disney got right was they like fantasy flight did with x-wing they made their models really really nice so if you look at nice. skylanders they're okay but they're definitely toys where these are so if you look if you really take a close look at some of the disney infinity stuff it's like well this is i wouldn't mind this on my desk this is, this uh-huh, is like up right. there with some of those little you know um collectibles and things so right. so they did a, they did a good job with it yeah i mean i think the perfect situation if you're depending on how old the the 
the child is that's like getting the game is you know it's the parents dream to have them play the game play the video game and then you go on your road trip and they bring the figures into the car and they spend two hours in the back seat playing with just the figures yes right you know like my guys were were uh, doing Skylanders and they were a little too old for that. I mean, they loved the game, but I never quite got the second side of it where they were using them as action figures, but right. it's totally possible. Oh, it totally is. And I, in fact, it's at a point where I will buy, I own a couple figures from each set that my daughters own because I want just to have them. Like I own Cap- Captain America is my favorite hero. So I own Cap, you know, wow. and, and, and he's mine. I won't let them play with him because he's my guy. He's my level dude. You can't touch him. You want Cap, you got to get your own. You know, so it's like, <laughs> I'm very defensive about him. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I have like one of, I have like Star Lord, I have Captain America, and I have like, um, for three, I shall have Luke. You know, that's, that's uh-huh. going to be it. Um, but yeah, so I think, I think it's, it's a good game and it's a lot there. And I think the, if your son likes, it is a better version of Minecraft. I mean, Minecraft's still their favorite game because there's so many servers on Minecraft, so much crazy stuff happening in Minecraft. But right. the things you can build in Disney Infinity are uh, on par, par. And in some ways, the programming and stuff you can do is actually more powerful than Minecraft. So uh, it's, it's, it's good stuff. It's a very creative game. And, and I think you'll, uh, you'll, you'll enjoy watching your son discover yeah. what he can do now, in the game. Okay, here's another question as I look yeah. at some of the stuff I'm looking at. The figures are for any game system, but you have to get the the actual like sort of launching pad for your game system. Is yes. That true? So, yeah. so yeah. So the the only hardware requirement is the pad. You have to buy the right pad for the right game system. Right. But the yeah. cool thing is the miniatures are interchangeable. So that means if you're if Reese has a friend who has a a Wii or a PlayStation and they have Infinity, they can come to your house with their figures and they'll work on his system and they'll be the right level too, which is right. pretty slick. So that really allows for the trading. And that's the other thing, Ryan, that's brilliant about this as well. They've managed to make the, the plastic you buy system independent. So they don't need a Xbox version of Luke Skywalker and a PS4 version of Luke Skywalker. It's just Luke. He works on everything. Which yeah, is, that's, which again that's is incredible. Yeah. Um, so yeah, not unlike your guys. Your guys you know, actually, the instruments didn't work out for Rock Band, did they? They had to be... Uh, were they specific for each? Um, because of, the, I mean, there's a million different f- flavors of the answer for that. Is yeah. but but um, usually platforms are 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 independent. Yeah. We we have you know we've done things to allow people to bring their music and their instruments from generation to generation. Right. Um, but it's harder to go across, mostly because the different platforms use different wireless technology and all that. Different wireless technology. So the cool thing about um, infinity is I'm guessing uh, is that it's the pad that yes. is, um, non-generic yes. because that's the part that's plugging in. And then right. the figures can be generic because the pad is the thing that's going to translate the RF information or whatever's in there. And what they managed to pull off this time around, which, which was pretty interesting is that the Disney infinity two pad is compatible with Disney infinity three mm-hmm. and the Xbox 360 Disney Infinity Pad is compatible with the Xbox One. Okay. Which was so I'm too. looking here at Disney Infinity 3.0 Edition Star yep. Wars Starter Pack. Now, yep. there's no other. That's the game. That's the game plus, plus I believe, Luke figures. and Leia and the and the Death Star, I think, which is the Death Star, the New Hope level, I think. Okay. So I'm not buying, like, a game and then I have to buy. No, you get. The, so you have enough to start. That's So that's basically what they call them play sets. So the, the piece yes, that you put yes. on there. Is the is the so you're basically getting um, the equivalent of one video game story, right. right? Which is the Death Star level of a New Hope or whatever it is, yeah. and you're getting two figures, so two people can play at the same time. So you can play with yeah. Reese. One of you be Luke, and one of you be Leia or whatever it is. Okay. And then you're getting the core game, the, the CD you need to play the game. And now all you need to do is buy more figures and buy more play sets, and you can add more stuff to it. Gotcha. Okay. Right. Yep. So there you go. I, so now I, just I turn into a Disney Infinity Primer. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well. Look at that. Okay. See, look at that. And that just goes to show you how di- video games are evolving yet again. There's your there's your current AAA title, uh, Ryan. Yeah. Is this is this, is this hard? Is, it is sort of interesting because you got, you know, Harmonix, you guys did that too because you had a bunch of cool hardware that you wanted to buy, uh, mm-hmm. which became a whole industry and a whole spinoff industry. And now these guys are doing something similar with figures. That's kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's It's also funny bringing the different groups of people together to do that. Like when we were doing the original Guitar Hero um, hardware, it was just a bunch of video game guys trying to be physical designers. You know, right. we, we wound up working with some talented industrial designers, but yeah. like me just drawing the guitar, hoping that buttons would be <laughs> right and all that stuff. And, um, and as time has moved on, we've just, you know, we, we wound up building a 3D physical shop at harmonics. So during the peak of rock band, 
we had like a ten, I don't know, ten or fifteen person team that was just our hardware team, where we had people making physical models and wiring up uh, circuits and stuff um, in in a video game developer uh, 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 studio, which was really unique and interesting. That's cool. That's cool. I'm, I got to guess that the guys doing Infinity and stuff are doing that sort of thing. At least three D, you know, three D designers cranking out the new figures and figuring out how they're going to work. That's interesting. Yeah, totally. And all the all the RF technology. I think those are RF, but whatever the right. electronics yeah. are in there, like that's stuff that you know typical video game developers are, don't know anything about. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> And you think about where it's going, uh, you know, I, I know we're a little long, but you think about like what's happening now with, with, with virtual reality and, and Oculus and other stuff, uh, that's a whole other universe of, of things that's going to happen too. So what, it'd be interesting to see where it all goes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've been doing a bunch of virtual reality stuff at harmonics now, and it's just so bizarre to have to like work in that space. You're working in a non-real space and, uh, like the Morpheus first PlayStation, has solved uh, a lot of them are starting to solve the problem of like nausea and things like that. But when we were making the early prototypes for uh, harmonics music, um, VR, the, the sort of, uh, music game experience that we're making, um, there was a giant pile of motion sickness pills in the studio (laughs) and, and I'm not even, I'm not even making that story up. Like people really had to pop these, these motion sickness pills. I can Um, imagine the guys on the floor taking the pill going, Oh God, this is going to be great. This is going to sell like hotcakes. And they're trying not to throw up. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, it it was really rough on the early VR headsets because they didn't have motion tracking. So you could get sick really easily, but now it's like, it's, it's virtually it. gone. Uh, yeah. It's like it's. I, I never experience any of that motion sickness anymore. Yeah, that's that's exciting, and, and even seeing what Microsoft was showing with Hololens. I know some of that smoke and mirrors, but where they're heading with this stuff is pretty crazy. Yeah, um, that's going to be awesome too. So, well, very cool. Well, Ryan, I could talk to you forever about this stuff. So, I think we we'll have to have you back on the mm-hmm. show at some point. But but we'll have you on here in a couple in about a week or so to talk more about. Um, uh, about video games and how they influence board games, but also to talk in detail about High Heavens as well. Excellent. Can't wait. Uh, Great. So take care. Enjoy those donuts, and we'll see you again in about a week. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks for purchasing a D6G Lost Chapter. Supporting the show helps it grow. Thank you.